You never know. That's a hey, that's what got AJ Lee popular. All right? Yeah, that's what got AJ Lee popular. But what to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're live right now, uh Russell Talk Media, uh, live on the American Alicard channel. And we're coming off the heels of a WWE Raw um event that was I mean, in my opinion, was a pretty good show. Decent show that's live. A lot of new controversy spawning up because now people are kind of pissed off at the fact that, that um, Roman Reigns is kind of getting pushed to the to the side. Maybe they may be going with a Daniel Bryan defeats Roman Reigns at Fast Lane. So, um, oh boy, me and American Art Card is about to go in on this situation as we speak. You know, going into you know giving going into commentary, going to opinions and. Uh, and also breaking down strategies or where, where they can go with the situation. And there's also a lot of different things we also have to talk about as far as um, a couple of uh, strikes in, in, or, or I guess shots fired that uh, American Alicard had took at certain, uh, a certain person, basically addressing the issue. So we're going to get to all of that and yeah. everything on this particular show, which is, uh, which is our WWE versus TNA special as, as well. A lot of you that may be viewing it on the channel. Um, but uh, Russell Talk Media, and, and we're ready. Uh, America, take it away. Like, uh, is WWE Raw? I'm going to give it a pretty good show because uh, it started off very slow. I, it's, it's the same formula I think WWE is going to be sticking with for a long time, unfortunately. The promo, and then they get started with wrestling, and the first out, it's just like a, a very slow build, and when it finally caught ahead of steam, it all came together in the end. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I, I I felt like you know the beginning was was a little sluggish, but maybe it served its purpose as far as setting up the rest of the evening. So uh, with this particular show, I, I I think I think Raw, in my opinion, was was a pass. Uh, yeah. And uh, great matches uh, within the second hour. Uh, and third. Yeah, and, and and third hour. So and I I I think it for for me on this one, I have a problem with. The audience, the fans. The WWE fans are, are the most bitchiest and biased than, I guess, bipolar fans you will ever run across so far. In that they're very spoiled. And, and you may say, we, you may look at me and say, hold up, aren't you a WWE fan? Yeah, I mean, but I'm a realist though. You know, I'm gonna keep it real. You know, as 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 eighty with ninety percent as, as I can. You know, um, without being a biased WWE fan towards anything else. But at the same time, this is my thing about this show. The fans were against Rome. Now they're kind of, if you listen to the audience of the crowd, they're kind of swaying. They don't, I, I think they, they don't really like the fact that, you know, WWE was what, what I once said on the last show before American, that WWE gets behind a certain wrestler. That's when they start rebelling. So now that Triple H is basically favoring Daniel Bryan to, you know, pushing them in, and now giving them that shove. Now the audience is like, no, Roman. Well, Roman Reigns, man. Like, come on, guys. But well, well, do you also think it's because, you know, Philadelphia and Denver, they're two different cities. You know, Philadelphia, they're more of the ROH crowd and more of the, we going to see the stiff hard edge, and Denver is more of the casual fans. And this is not knocking anybody that's from Philadelphia, but... <laughs> Y'all, when y'all get into these damn uh, arenas and, and sports arenas, y'all have the stupidest. Y'all let the most emotional, stupidest people lead your chance. Stop it, please. I, I, I don't know. Maybe the, the maybe the, the realists are out there just shutting the fuck up. But y'all let the most bitchiest and whiniest people. Y'all just let nerds take over y'all goddamn chance. Because um, Philadelphia, y'all fucked up that show. And, and there was no reason for y'all to fuck that show with some stupid ass chance. Like, I, I, I don't like it when, when people, they get what they want and then, oh, you know what? I just have to complain. I have to complain. You know, but uh, I, let, let me let me bag back for a second because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go there again, American. I'm going to go there again. <laughs> but um, let's get straight to this audience. You know, um, I, I agree. I think I think Denver, you know, was was more on the chops. They were just keeping it real, and they they like the entertainment that they give. They don't see anything wrong with the, the Roman Reigns situation, you know. And women were going crazy for for Roman Reigns. Like, like I think he wetted a couple panties walking down the ramp <laughs> or the stairs or whatever. 
I'm glad my girl went in that audience. But uh, I, I feel like, you know, they kept it real, and they I think they kind of fell through, you know, short on buying into the whole trend of Daniel Bryan situation, you know, because it, it's, it's – you know what? I'm gonna bag up off because I'm 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 about to I think I'm about to come a little too hard on this one. So I'm I'm let you go ahead, uh, American, with with your comments on the situation. Well, let, let's get into the beginning of the show. Triple H promo talks about I'm gonna face Steen and Steen's gonna face me in the middle of the ring, toe to toe. So that's is that something that's gonna be a pay per view like just a face off, maybe a a fight or whatever. And then the crowd starts chanting, "We want Steen." Stephanie gets in, gets in the middle of it. You will, you will see Steen for nine ninety nine on the network and for free to new subscribers. I, I, I guess like Steen now and WWE, this is how they're going to use them. This is how they use big, big guys. Like what in the other company, Steen he just became a part of the roster. He had to earn the money or whatever. Here in WWE, you see him in short bursts, and it's supposed to make him feel more special. How, how do you feel about that, the, the uses of Sting now in WWE? The usage of Sting, in my opinion, <coughs> I, I, I would say uh, it's poor. Um, if you, you take it all the way back to the Survivor Series, it's a very poor usage of Sting. Um, the storylines he's given, you know, they're kind of they're very predictable. I have no problem with predictable storylines, but when they're predictable to the point where they're they're, they're, they're a no brainer flatline, I mean, what's the juiciness the juiciness that you get out of this story? I mean, let's say if we had a sting run in with a sting run in with the extension would be more exciting to me. Mm-hmm. You know, a sting running with Bray Wyatt is more exciting to me than a sting running with Triple H. And it leads all to Triple H again being on the WrestleMania card mm-hmm. it, it, and him it, it, in the it, it, It's more of an ego. It, 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 to me, it feels like more of an ego stroke for, for Triple H. I mean, I'd rather, it, and even if it's not leading up to a match between him and Triple H, I just feel like, like, come on, man. I think y'all should be milking the storyline between Sting and somebody else right now. Not Sting and... and you know, uh, Triple, H. Triple H. I think if anything, that should be Sting and Y2J, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho makes his, his appearances very rare, but you know, Sting and Jericho didn't make very good run-ins in WCW. If people don't remember, if those who remember, how many matches did you see with Sting and Jericho in? I'll wait. You know, so those these are two people that were in WCW that didn't really cross paths. So uh, we, I have an American. You can go ahead. You can. Uh, you can YouTube and see if we had any Sting and uh, uh, Chris Jericho matches uh, in WCW because I don't recall any Sting and in, 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 uh, Jericho's matches in WCW. I don't recall very many. Uh, if there was one, may have been one real, real early one, but when Jericho was at his peak and he was the, the lion chamber, you no. know, uh, yeah, no. okay. So Sting and Jericho never faced each other in WCW, on Nitro at least. So I would say this. I'm I'm pretty much intrigued to see a, a Jericho and Sting rather than uh, you know Triple H and, and 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 Sting. I mean I think that it would be it would be what people would want to see because, because at, Jericho he's you know people, people hate to admit this but Jericho he's a far better wrestler than Triple H. Yeah, and one thing you get, you get to see is you get to see Walls of Jericho versus the Sting. So. You, you get those two elements. You get the submission elements, both submission specialists, you know, with, with their signature moves going up against each other. Then Jericho can carry a match. Sting can go. So you, ha- you have a greater match, and then having Jericho join the authority is more of a, 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 a great angle, where Jericho joins the authority with it, and he's the authority guy to take out Sting. That's where they need to go with it. Bring, if you're going to use utilize Jericho, bring Jericho back for the Sting rivalry. That is money because therefore it has it has a decent storyline because therefore you got two guys that never faced each other in WCW. You can create one out of uh, they have an issue with each other or 
that you know that Sting hated on you in WCW, so now they have a rivalry against each other now. Where now Jericho wants to come, he, he wants to come, he wants to he wants to confront Sting about this, and he wants to go at it with him and show that he 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 was the best, and he was always hated on in WCW. So I think this is a, a chance for them, for WWE to capitalize on that instead of a Triple H versus Sting. I don't. <laughs> I wouldn't even care if Sting beats Triple H in WrestleMania. I, don't, I really don't want to see. Nobody Triple cares. H. Yeah, you, 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 Triple H. As far as him being, a, to me, he's not interested. In, he, he's not interesting in neither storyline with nobody. I don't see anybody that I would be interested in seeing a storyline. The only person that, that can make a storyline decent with Triple H is Sheamus. You know, I would. Probably tolerate a match between him and Sheamus, where you know maybe there's this, you know, a revenge, you know, that, that that some back way back when when he got his ass kicked by Sheamus, maybe that or something like that. But other than that, I don't care to see Triple H, and, and it's not a knock on you, Triple H. You know, uh, great dude, do your thing. But as far as you, you care in the storyline right now, I would say I rather see, or, or or you know, I take that back. Instead of Sheamus, I would say The Rock. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let, let The Rock go ahead and whoop your ass at WrestleMania and do it like that instead. And uh, I would rather see a Rock versus Triple H match because these two guys they know each other and they know each other you know, in and out, and they have chemistry when it comes to the ring. You know what I'm saying? And people love to see The Rock <laughs> kick Triple H's ass all the time in the back of the day. So I would rather see The Rock versus Triple H, you know, um, situation go on there. And Sting versus Jericho, you know, Jericho is, is good to go. I say Sting versus Jericho, Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker, you know. You know this scenario that I came up with the, the, Jer- the Bray Wyatt situation. But, you know, that's my opinion on, on this one. And that's, I, I guess, the uh, the the storyline going in for you know. And uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and, and put your emphasis on it, then we can get, get back into the review of Raw. All right. Well... Then he said something about the controversy with Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble. Royal, uh, Roman Reigns comes out, like I said, massive pop from the Denver crowd, females going wild, gets in the ring. What controversy? I won the Royal Rumble. And then I see right here, Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins come out. Daniel Bryan talks about not getting his rematch for the world title. And then Triple H says, look, we would have gave you the title of rematch because you lost it. And they and uh Brian Lesnar, he's he's not even there that much. So I can I almost speak Brian Lesnar's name, but I would have given you one, but you ended the Royal Rumble, so that cancels out your rematch, which I don't think they can they do that, but whatever. And then Seth Rollins says, comes out and says, Look, 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 I, I'm the guy that put a cheat in Brock Lesnar's armor. I cracked one of his ribs, and you know when Seth Rollins is talking, it's a good promo. But do you think you have a money in the bank briefcase? Why? Why are you fighting to get so many title shots? Like you, you kind of like, is it kind of devaluing the money in the bank briefcase? It, it kind of feels like that to me. Like, well, you got, I, I, okay, I, I say it's a. It, it does fit his character to keep doing that because it's, it's a greed situation. He wants more options, but he needs to say it. I, I feel like the only thing you, you critique that and say is that he needs to say that he wants more options where he's um, where he has the money in the bank, but he wants a match with Brock. And you know what? Just in case I got this briefcase here for insurance policy if I need to so I can cash in right once again. Um, Right. Well, he 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 has to he be, well he has to be able to cash in before, um, <clears throat> which the rules just to be before the, the next money in the bank. The money bank pay per view. So, you know, um, okay. Well, I, I I would say it's more of a, it's more of an options and more, more of a greed situation. And, and, and he's kind of playing it out where he 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 should still be trying to get into the picture, make it interesting. And you know, um, let's, let's face it. Daniel Brown is, is boring as shit, you know, besides his yes chance. So, therefore, you don't need somebody like Seth Rollins to be in the mix and be getting confused and caught up, be the middleman in this whole situation. So, um, thank you, Seth Rollins. Well, I, I'm also thinking, like, this is one thing I saw. I don't know if you noticed it, too. 
now Daniel Bryan has fur, goat like goat looking fur on his boots. Who the yeah. fuck told him to do that? Who, uh, <laughs> I thought I was the only person that noticed it. Um, I, I showed it. I thought I was the only person that kind of took notice to it and caught issue with it because I was kind of like, what the fuck is you know, <laughs> I, 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 I get it. I get it that, that, that going, Daniel Bryan's going with the whole, they're going with the whole, you know, don't look like the uh, average, or don't don't look like the the face of the company. Be the anti face. I get it, but dudes, you don't have to look that fucking ridiculous. You know, go go Kidman style. You know, it, you know if you're gonna be anti uh, face, you know, it, at least do something like that. Like this shit, he he pulling with his with the, he looks ridiculous, man. He. he and people complain about this is the people complain about Roman Reigns. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Daniel Bryan ha- has the most disgusting looking ass beard. With I don't know what the fuck he, he I don't know if he, he's trying to play Shawn Michaels with his hair. I don't know what the hell is going on there. He looks like a little goddamn troll with his little fur boots and shit like that. I'm like people what, what for every, for people that's that's watching this deal right now. What the fuck? Are y'all accepting? Y'all accept any? But what I, what I really feel like it is, I think Daniel Bryan spoke to a lot of the, the geeks and the nerds and the people that never, ever, ever get an ounce of any type of nothing. And they say, we want to live, we want to live out through this guy. That's pretty much what I'm getting is that a lot of them motherfuckers want to live out through this weird ass dude here because Daniel Bryan is completely weird, you know. I am a fan of Dan Bryan's in-ring work, but I think like the WWE is giving him all this stupid stuff, like the fur boots and the, the, the beard. It can't, it could be trying to, but it is his character. They're just giving him all these stupid things, and he's just like, okay, whatever, I do it. I'm, I'm a company guy, or whatever. You know, I, I don't care. My 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 wife is here. I, she likes it here. I like it here. Whatever. I, I don't care. Hey, more stupid shit for me. I like it. You like it. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm. I don't know, man. I, I I just feel like the whole Daniel Bryan thing. I think people, if people really sit back and reevaluate what the fuck they're cheering for, you know, they're like, hmm, why the fuck are we cheering for this guy again? You know, because I understand the only thing that he has going for himself is the yes chance. That's it. And the in-ring work. Oh well, uh, the only reason why I, I discount his in-ring work is because therefore he's not doing nothing that Seth Rollins can't do. He's not doing nothing that. That that your boy Tyson Kidd can't do. He's not doing nothing that Diego can't do. He's not doing nothing that Kofi Kingston. He this athleticism and his ability is pretty much some of them overshadow him, but this is pretty much the same. It's, he's not more he's not more exciting in the ring than a lot of these other wrestlers. So therefore, the only real thing that separates him is the, the chat. So when the chat if the chat dies right now, if people say, you know what? Because it, it, I'm noticing a lot of more people are it was like tonight it was less less people saying yes. It wasn't as big as it used to. It, it's not. It's really. It's, it's losing a lot of steam. I get that. You know. So I wonder. So when that yes chant dies off, what now? You know. What what was? It, was he gonna go back to no? I don't know. I mean, cause, what did you have next? The best thing. Uh, probably. But well, the best thing I think that Daniel Bryan needs to do. He does need to be healed, but he'll leash because therefore, the fans are still gonna be behind him. Yeah. But at least he'll have it'll be entertaining. He he has some type of front to his character because therefore he's boring, and they need people need to actually have an issue with him. You know, they they're gonna like him and they're gonna have an issue with him at the same time. So I think he needs to go back to the heel, and no chance because <clears throat> going up against Roman Reigns, you don't want to see Daniel Bryan beat Roman Reigns fair and square. You don't want to see Daniel Bryan beat. Uh, uh, Brock Lesnar, fair and square. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, he's already beaten Roman Reigns, fair and square. Like the last match they had, he just it, it, it wasn't it wasn't pretty. He he pretty much took Roman Reigns into a technical school. Like Roman Reigns didn't even get any power moves off. He just kept putting him in like arm bars, leg bars. That what is it called? That, that springboard thing, the surfboard thing. He was just it was nasty. Roman Reigns did not look clean on that one. Um, um, they, they they let. Daniel Bryan beat Roman Reigns clean. Clean. So, what was, what was, what was, what was doing the summertime? Yeah, when like the whole Shield versus Bryan and 
Randy Orton, Kane, all that stuff was happening. They had a singles match. I think I, I think those time a lot of folks they were complaining about that as well. They were saying that, yeah they shouldn't let them bury. I think I remember that, <clears throat> but um, yeah. Considering considering the momentum that Roman Reigns has, I don't think nobody wants to see that now. Not now, you know. And, and it's it's to me it's, it's just it's a fucking shame. But um, but th- this is what people want. They, they this is what some of the folks want. But it's starting to show that everybody's not really down with this this fuckery of Daniel Bryan shit. And I, I guess everybody's not that bitchy, or maybe the fans are bitchy. They just don't know what the fuck they want. You know, they this way one minute, they that way one one minute. They, you know, I I don't know, but uh, for those who keep saying, but for the people, for all my the podcast viewers, viewers and doers go about coming through or whatever you, you call yourselves, please stop it with this shit about oh Daniel Bryan's gonna leave the company or Daniel Bryan doesn't get pushed by the company. That's what they that's he's a company guy. American Out Car just just took notice and said to it. He's a company guy. Everything he does is what the company wants him to do. As far as a lot of things as, as agreed, it's the shit that he wants to do. Is his role is to be the underdog. If if people catch when that the that the actual company is behind Daniel Bryan, you know what'll happen? His value go down. They know that. So therefore they have to they have to keep acting like it's a role. They're playing a role where they have to act like they're anti Daniel Bryan. That's why they make him an anti looking character. To where he's an underdog looking guy, anti he's not your average looking. So therefore they do that on purpose, people. You know. Daniel Bryan is, is the most happiest dude on the fucking fucking roster. If you watch him, yeah, watch Total Divas, you know. That dude the, the first season he was playing with John Cena like like they were two two kids in the, in the damn playground. Sucking like a lot of pops or something. They was happy, ooh, jumping in the pool together and shit. As gay as can be. You know, they, they're happy. They're, they're not worried about shit, not a damn thing. Dave Bryan's like, hey, give a fuck shit. I'm, I'm happy. I like my role, you know. But that's the thing. W is smart. What they're doing is they, they, they suppress Daniel Bryan because they know he's not been entertaining. You have to make him entertaining. You have to continue to act like you don't like him. So that way the fans get behind him. Keep Keeping him as the underdog, you know, the guy who overcomes great obstacles and da 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 da. Revenge of the Nerds Part One, Two, Three. This is that's that is that's Daniel Bryan. That's him. He's he's the Revenge of the Nerds guy. You know, he's that weird, odd dude, the vegan guy that you like. What the fuck is this dude? You know, that's him. He's he's Booger. That's what that's who he is. He's Booger, an athletic version of, of Booger, winning everything. So. That's who Daniel Bryan is, man. And, and but he, he he's in cahoots with the goddamn corporation. They're all they're all working together. It, it's not it's not a CM Punk situation. Which everybody like, oh man, see uh, they need to let so somebody has something. They said uh, Daniel Bryan needs to get the mic and tell the truth, let people know what's going. On. He's happy. What the fuck are y'all talking about? That man, that man is high fiving with with Triple H and this man. He's happy as hell. You know. From what I heard from my inside source, he's an ass. What they call ass because he's an ass kisser. He loves him. You know, this shit, that guy, that guy's on cloud nine. So people with all of the, oh, Daniel Bryan's getting hated on. No, that's that's how you would have to. If I was booking Daniel Bryan, that's how I would book him. If he's over, I have to do him like that because therefore I see what makes the, the fans get invested. It's when he ain't shit. Now, before Daniel Bryan rose to success. He was really not the fans didn't really give a shit until until the WWE start acting like they were against him. Then people gave a shit. So therefore if WWE stops their formula, they kill Daniel Bryan's character. So they have to continue acting like they don't like him because it's no big it's no big doubt that he, he's over now. It's no big doubt. Yeah. You know. But if we keep that, then all of a sudden if you keep notice and all of a sudden he, he we let let it be known he's 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 a main main player, he's a main event player, you know, that loses his value. And then WWE, once people get tired of him, they throw him away. Backrider. They throw him away. Drew McIntyre. They throw him away. They, they, they don't, 
there's, there's no they throw them away. Shameless. You know, there's no more. We don't give a shit about this guy no more. Randy Orton. Throw them away. That's how it goes. So what you have to do, and what W's been doing, which is they're the genius, keep Daniel Bryan suppressed. To a mo to, to, to minimum, let him win, then let him get pushed down. Let him overcome. Let him go through more hurdles, hurdle, hurdle. Then finally get a reward. Oh yes, yes. Because they know WWE knows what's gonna happen. They have to they have to preserve him as long as they can because they know that he's boring this shit. If you don't believe me, if you, and if you don't believe that he 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 plays by the rules, type in on uh, YouTube Daniel Bryan outtakes or yeah, basically behind the scenes outtakes. About to find out daily motion cause the thing uh, WWE is trying to take that video down from YouTube. So oh no 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 I I I, I found the other one. I I, I know okay. you talking about they they took it down. I found another one. You type on YouTube, you probably find somebody else with it again. But yes, um. You you get you get you get something that yeah W they don't want you to see you get basically Daniel Bryan out of character and and, and it's, it's total uh, is a, is a fucking total ass kisser on this video so I mean you get that you you get the proof of the gif and the proof of what we're, what we're saying on here but um th that's my spiel on on, on Daniel Bryan for all you video bloggers that keep saying oh eh, eh, no 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 that man's happy he ain't nowhere near a fucking CM Punk. Or anybody that, that was that was anti against WWE, that dude is for WWE. He loves what they're doing with his character. He loves it. From my inside source, he loves it. My inside source from so far, what everybody's noticed on you know this these shows that my inside source is accurate, <laughs> right on accurate. We we get the real shit. So therefore, Daniel Bryan's very very happy. So for you fans that are always thinking suppressed, no, Daniel Bryan wants his character to be like this. He's in agreement. So I'm sorry to bust, give you a spoiler, and bust your bubble. He likes it. He likes what they do with his, with his character. So for all you assholes that think that you know what you know, no. Brian don't know, don't know more than what, what we know already. But Danny Brian loves his character. He likes yeah. it. Well, going back to the theme, Triple H said, Ron Reigns, you're, you're in the middle of all this controversy, and here's something you can do to right the wrongs and get people back on your side. We're going to have <laughs> Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan, and the winner of that match goes on to face Roman Reigns at Fastlane for a shot to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And Roman Reigns is like, what the fuck? I, I, won, I won the World Royal match. Why would I even agree to this? And Stephanie like, look, you do this. Yeah, uh, what do you call it? You, uh, you you do something for your family, make your family proud. You, you hush all the booing and all that. And Roman Reigns is like, okay, I'll do it. So later on tonight, you, Brian versus Seth Rollins for a shot to face Roman Reigns for the number one contendership. And now this is where we, where we this is the part of the show where we also do, we, we, we live up to our hype of the WWE versus TNA. And I'm like, I, I gotta draw. I gotta, I gotta throw in the, the comparison card, man. I, I gotta throw it in. I gotta throw in the flag on this one. Okay. <laughs> My problem with, with WWE on this one, since they're such a big fucking company, I said, man, this would be a perfect time to really show the versatility and bring out that side of Roman Reigns to real be realistic. You know, that was the part where you, a guy like that who who, who Who's in rage? He shouldn't be so goddamn submissive to this. Mm -hmm. He should. He should be like, what? Really? Really? I would have. Big guy like him. He should. He should get out the ring, kind of storm up the ramp. Like, you know what? That's how y'all gonna do me. This is how y'all do me. And I, I'm. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of y'all suppressing me, putting me down. He should have then took on that I'm being pushed down wrong. I'm always, I'm, I'm always got. I know he, he should have took the victim role right then and there. He didn't really capitalize on the victim role like. I mean, that's what I, I would have had him go out to the ramp, you know, walk up the ramp, and then Triple H say, "Hey, where are you going? Where are you going? Can, do you yourself. Do yourself." He's like, you know what? Y'all gonna do what you want, what you want to do. Do what you want to do with me anyway. But you know what? Yeah, go ahead. Have a match. And and, and I think that should have happened. They should have showed that side, so people would have drew in. Like you know, they would have really. Drew in and say, you know what? I feel where he's coming from. A lot of folks would 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 identify with that part of Roman Reigns because therefore it happens to a lot of us in everyday life. Where no, 
boss asks you, hey, you want to come into work? He's like, no, I really don't. And, well, we need you to come into work. Damn, I didn't really have an option. You know what I'm saying? So you should out of luck anyway. So that you, you have to – one thing you got to take, take instance back to uh, attitude era. Attitude era, the reason why Stone Cold worked so well is because it, he was basically – Lit channeling the the average day worker and their boss, you know that situation. People identified with that and they felt that. APA connected so well because at the time people wanted to party and kick it with their homeboys all the time and drink and party. So you kicking it with your homeboy and they they connected. A lot of these characters connected because they related to the people. You gotta have Roman Reigns if if, if that situation Roman Reigns supposed to capitalize on being the guy that's being put down for somebody for somebody else. For, you know, just because because spoiled fans want, want this guy, so now I have to take it back to when I won fair and square. So now I make the comparison with, with TNA's commentary. They go there. They, they have that freedom. I know this MVP has that freedom to say what he wants to say. Bobby, everybody gets that gets that that chance to to be edgy, to go to him him. When you see the the conversation between MVP and 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 Robert Rude, I mean, it, it's 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 un it's almost natural. Yeah, it's just like they they get to go there. They get to be animated. They they, they get to you know go off the off the, the fucking chart with it. They get to go other places. You know, it, if 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 he wants, he can go. He can go. He's like, you know what? Y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. I, I like this conversation with Kurt Angle. He takes some avenues. <clears throat> they do that, and I want to see that being done with Roman Reigns. If he if this if this is happening to you, you just won the Royal Rumble. You just celebrated with your cousin, The Rock. You just, you just, been, you, you, you went through adversity. You, you battled a, a piss poor ass, bitchy ass crowd. You, over, you overcame some odds. You even threw out the unstoppable Russo. And now you got some people want to tell you, oh, you know what? Um, just because people are crying out there, we want you to uh, let these guys have a match to determine. If they can take your spot, like what the fuck is that shit? That don't even the whole segment don't even sound. If you when you think, but it with logical sense, it doesn't make any sense. It's like hold up, what? <laughs> if that's the case, just have the Royal Rumble over again. Have, just do like a small battle royal. That, if that, that's all you have to do. None of that makes sense. Now he is, now he has he has a chance to lose his spot in the Royal Rumble. You know, yeah, that they don't sound right. I mean, yeah, nobody nobody should allow anything like that. Like, yo, you, you won it, and we're gonna count down the record books, but uh, we're still gonna put your spot up on the line. Thank you, because now you think about it, like, okay, he won a Royal Rumble. Okay, oh, it, it, think about it as, as in history. When it looks in history, it's like, oh, okay, Ro oh, oh, so Royal Rumble number such and such. Oh, okay, that's the one Roman Reigns won. Okay, great. Well, did he win at WrestleMania? Mm, oh, um, he won a minute. He got injured. Oh no, you know they did a match where you know two other fighters were able to go on and face him at the previous pay per view, and uh, he lost. So he relinquishes. Hold on, how somebody was about? Was it a controversial fight in the Royal Rumble or something? Both of them got eliminated. Oh no, no, no! It's the crowd just didn't like that he won. The fuck is this shit? <laughs> if Mike Tyson knock out somebody, or Mike Tyson getting knocked out, the crowd don't like it. I don't, I've never seen nobody we're gonna reverse the decision. The crowd doesn't like that you knocked Mike Tyson out, Holyfield. So we want to <laughs> relinquish this goddamn bill. Matter of fact, give him. We're gonna we're gonna have another goddamn shot. Like what the hell? It makes no. I understand that this is entertainment, people. I understand that, but at the same time, what the fuck? I mean, at least don't insult people's intelligence. And uh, Tech Rev once said before, yeah, they they're insulting our intelligence. They really are with this one. Like, what the fuck? How, how can you fix your face to say, oh, well, you know, we're gonna just we're gonna just move you out the goddamn you no, know, yeah, yeah, this is what we gotta do. If anything, go ahead and just say, because they, they say it's great when they put Batista, you know, in, in that three-way. But at the same time, just go ahead and make it three-way. 
if that's the case, don't kick the guy. Don't put the guy's spot in jeopardy with something that he, he it wasn't controversy. It wasn't a controversy win. The only controversy was it was no controversy. One guy, one guy couldn't continue. The only, the only thing that you can anybody can make an argument. They can say, oh, uh, uh. Axel, he got it. he 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 never got eliminated. No, pretty much you can call him, you can ring him out as disqualified because there's plenty of wrestlers that got knocked out before they went to the ring, and that's when they they couldn't compete. He couldn't compete. That's what that was. So his issue has to be his story has to be the person that actually kicked his ass. That's all. That's all that is. So other than that, there's no real storyline to go with with Axel. So there was no controversy or winning Royal Rumble. Am I correct? Or was, yeah. it, was it controversial? Because from my understanding, Daniel Bryan, it, you just got threw out that motherfucker. That was it. <laughs> he just got tossed out. It, there wasn't no hanging on the rope, dangling, and Kofi Kingston going on. That was he just threw out that motherfucker. That was, it. that was it. So people, people, you know. Don't sit here and watch that shit and be like, yo, that's that's cool. But I noticed the Denver audience, they were pretty much like, yeah, we ain't feeling this down. Like, how y'all gonna take this nigga spot like this? What was, was, was really good. So that's my issue with, with WWE on that part. I feel like if if that if he's facing that, he should be able to lash out a little bit more. He, he should he should have been more livid and he should have been more animated than like, whoa, whoa, whoa y'all fucking crazy. Yeah, he should have took the walk right back up that goddamn alley again. <laughs> Just say, you know what? Y'all have this thing. Y'all can have this. I, ain't, I, I this this can't be happening. I ain't dealing with this. He should have, and they should have capitalized on an interview. Renee Young should have been back there to interview him. Like Roman Reigns, how do you feel now? Like, oh, I, what do you think I feel? He should have went off. Like, I think I feel. They just took my spot. I earned that spot. You know, he should have been able to express all that because people are going to identify with him. You know, he could have came up with him a new chance. Right then, on, on that spot, people, I guarantee you, if he would have came up with a new chant or so, said something, that would have stuck with him, and that would have been his, 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 his key into getting into that door of being over, way over, because people are ready to get behind Roman Reigns. As, as you can see, out of all the, the, the bitching and grinding, the bitching and whining they've been doing, they're ready to get behind Roman Reigns. And... For some strange reason, you know, WWE they can't keep can't kind of quite get it right. You know, they're flopping. But I, I just feel like I think that those things need to be critiqued about the show. Then that's something that you they should have capitalized on was him having that issue of yo, um, you guys are trying to take my spot. I earned it, so it's in history. I won the Royal Rumble. What is the what? What controversy? Because I, I kept hearing it say controversy. What? What, what controversy? What was there, American? What controversy? The controversy was. Damn, hold on, hold on, hold on. The I fans, the fan, the fan. Okay, the controversy. The fans were booing that Roman Reigns. Uh, no, the, the fans were booing that Daniel Bryan got eliminated too early, and. That The Rock came out to stop the big show and came from beating up um, Roman Reigns. And I guess the troll controversy would be that th this is a troll now. This, this is the internet, you know, the IWC troll that Curtis Axel is the real winner of the Royal Rumble because he never got thrown out of the Royal Rumble. But that's more of a joke, right? He now. never entered the fucking ring. I know that. That's why. It's a, that's why. That's the you know the running internet troll of, of the thing of the internet right now. Like people are saying, Curtis Axel, 2015 Royal Rumble winner. They people have started making shirts and everything like that. Curtis Axel got screwed and all that stuff like that. It's more of a joke, you know. Yeah. Now, now. That Curtis Axel, now they can't make a slop storyline out of it where he's like, I never got eliminated. You no, know, because I, I, it was somebody else that once did that before. And he's like, I never got eliminated. Da, 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 da. But I think I think that it's it's a fresh it's a, it's fresh. They can do it now. They can redo it. Regret, you know, reuse that type of storyline where his he comes back. His argument is, you know what? I never lost the run. I never, da, 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 da. you know, I never lost. That should have been the actual match at Fastlane. 
it should have been Curtis Axel versus Roman Reigns. Where could have catapulted Curtis Axel back into Thank problems. you, thank you, because it would it would have gave him some some rub as so though like people would have been like, oh, that's the guy who won. Because people are going, there, there are going to people that are going to be hating. That's going to say that Curtis Axel won, or he, he didn't he, get, he didn't get a fair shake. Because I forget there's a couple more wrestlers that that because this happened several times. People have, have always gotten kicked out of uh, the fucking Royal Rumble before they even go out there. It's always happened to a couple of people. So I'm, I think that basically you have a situation where he can play off there. He can he can play off there. I'm, I'm the real winner, and he now attacks uh, Roman Reigns, and they go into a thing fast. Like I mean, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna turn it's gonna turn acting to a bona fide heel, you know. Or face. Like, well, yeah, yeah. Either way, but you know, it, when we get falling to it, Dirty kind of screwed that up tonight too. Like, okay, I mean, matter of fact, did they, I, I skipped it. Did they even show Curtis Axel? Uh, we, we, yeah, uh, uh, let, let's get into the next match. After that, we'll, that's the Curtis Axel thing. So, Roman Reigns, he's like, he says yes, and then Triple H says, okay, all right, then now stay here because you're going to have a match. And the Big Show music hits, and it's Big Show versus Roman Reigns. It, it, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't the best one. I mean, it, 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 it served a purpose for opening match. Uh, the match ends with Seth Rollins hitting Roman Reigns in the back in the in the, in the back with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Big Show hitting the choke slam, one two three, and that's the match. A lot of J and J security interference, you know, just like always. So typical. Yeah, typical. Okay. Well, you, you want to talk about this match? Or you just go and move on to the Curtis Axel. Oh, we move right. We move right along. Right, right, right. Get me started. <laughs> All right, so Curtis Axel comes out and he's like on the on the second row. He's like pointing to the WrestleMania side. He's like, "I'm the real WrestleMania winner, uh, uh, Royal Rumble winner." Crowd's kind of like, "Yeah," some booing. You know, it's in between. And then Dean Ambrose comes out and pretty much puts him over the t- over the rope and treats him like a, a jabroni or whatever. And then gets him like and says, "Look, uh, I know I didn't win the Royal Rumble, but while I was at uh, the headquarters." I saw a lot of pictures on the wall, kind of remember, reminded me of my mug shots or whatever. And he thought about it, being on the, the road to WrestleMania and the road to Fast Lane. I just realized something. I beat Bad News Bear, so that makes me the number one contender for the Intercontinental title. So I'm going to get to WrestleMania one way or another, and this is my road to Fast Lane. I think he meant to say WrestleMania or whatever. And then he gets attacked by Curtis Axel. So and then he pretty much beats down Curtis Axel and hits his finishing finishing move, dirty beads, uh, that double R DDT on. Yeah. You know, it's funny though. He, he used to use uh, EC threes and one percent of you know headlock driver DDT. Mm-hmm. But then now he started using the double R DDT. People, are, you know, these internet marks, they are saying, "Oh, Ambrose, he stole that move from EC three. You know, EC three while he was uh, Derek Bay, he was doing that move." It's, it's, it's obvious that W told him, look, look, EC3, he's doing that move down there. Don't stop doing that move. Just, just stop doing that headlock drawer. You got to find a new finisher. What do you think about what, like, like why they changed his finisher? I mean, I, mean it, I, I don't see anything wrong with that because, therefore, you know, you, you, go, you, you want to flare down the, the, uh, the IWC um Audience, so yeah, you, you, I mean, it, it's something that pro- maybe the wrestler himself wanted to change. You know, he maybe he wanted to change it up, maybe. You know, I really can't, I really can't touch him in a bit, really touch on, touch on it too much because therefore it's, it's plenty of reasons why it could happen. Um, you know, but for one, I mean, what you say, the the, the reason you say, is not too far fetched. Or well, they could have met each other because the re- you know wrestlers talk. Just because they work in different companies don't mean they hate each other. EC3 could have said, look, man, uh, you know, stop using my move, man. That's, you know, that's what I'm using down here to get over or whatever. I, 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 would, I would prefer, I would, I would think that, that, uh, that if anything, Ambrose probably told him, like, hey, man, I'll, I'm going to change my move up, whatever I get, a, a, you know, whatever. I see you, you got it. Well, I, I can see something like that going off where, you know, I'm pretty sure his friends, they're, they're going to address it. I don't think EC3 would like, hey, you need to stop doing the move. Like, hey, yeah, man. Change the move set up or whatever like that. You know, just something that he, because he, he's 
more. I would I would suspect it would mainly be Ambrose that would come up with a decision like that because therefore you don't want to live in the shadow of somebody else's move. You kind of want your own identity. Yeah. You don't really want, you don't want to feed into the internet marks out there that are gonna be oh yeah you, you're copying off this person or so. It's, it's, I think it's more of the wrestler that would change it instead of the, you know, the actual uh, person who has to move it. Then they're like, hey man, you know my. It, it's, it's usually the wrestler is going to be like, you know what? I don't, I don't want people to compare me to his move. So how how do you feel about that that, that treatment of Curtis Axel? I mean, like you said, they, it should be Roman Reigns versus Curtis Axel. Well, if you if you was you know if anybody folks is just listening to it and caught on to what I had just said just a couple of minutes ago, um, of course I'm disgusted. Then you know hearing that that's the segment that it happened, I'm disgusted. You know I I feel like they have, they have money right there with Curtis Axel versus Roman Reigns, where he has a legit beef with Roman Reigns. You know he it kind of comical because you're like you didn't, win. but then again, you know. Let him stretch it to the point where you, he kind of makes his, his case like I won, or I got I got mistreated, so I'm the real winner, or whatever. Like that. I think that'll be awesome. After I, I would say shit, at 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 I would the match I would make for them, their match would be an over the top of a match. You know, something new, uh, two on two over the top of match. The, you know, the the winner is the real deal. You know, the real deal. And, and I would make that match for his WrestleMania spot. I'm just saying. It, 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 it'll, it'll be funny, and it, it, it'll be risky. I would make that match for his WrestleMania spot. The over-the-top rope, two-man two man battle, like that. the one who goes over the top rope, you know what I'm saying, is eliminated. It's once, eliminated once and for all. So... The Dean Dean Ambrose going after Bad Bad News Barrett, so eventually he's going to get the IC title. I wonder if his IC title run is going to be better than his uh, United States no. title run. No, no, Dean Ambrose is bored when it comes to titles. He, he, he Dean Ambrose shouldn't, shouldn't be given no fucking. The only title Dean Ambrose, Ambrose should be given is a tag team title, because pair him up with somebody that will be that will be the total opposite of his his, his personality. Great, you got money. That's I, 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 what I had said. Uh, Dean Ambrose and Fandango need to be a team because it'll be something funny and comical to the point. Fandango is, t- is a totally different persona. Dean Ambrose's persona is totally different, and in, I'm pretty sure they'll hate each other. But having them as a as a team would be something fucking weird. You know what I'm saying? And but it would it would help uplift Fandango's character. You know, and then you have of course. Uh, Dan Ambrose's character, and I, I think I, we talked about it. On, I talked about it on, we talked about it on one show, one of the shows, past shows, and uh, I forget all, all who I who I kind of made the press that he need he needs partners with. But I think he despises Fandango, so somebody like, like somebody he despises, he needs to be a partner with, and win. You know, hell, I, if 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 Rusev if Rusev fuck around and lose, I would say hell, let him let him win a tag title with Rusev or something. You know, some it has to be somebody that's on total opposite that he does not like. You know, some some might some might comment in the section below say, "Well, what about Seth Rollins?" Then, uh, you know, I I don't really want to see them really jointing up two times. I, I want I want somebody that's a little way more different and it actually needs that rub right now. And but it can be a big a, a, a very you know uh, cash in type of situation where they have a legit entertaining tag team. Oh, like that's oh Kane, yeah, that's what, that's what I said. That's off of Kane. I think Kane and, and Ambrose should be a tag team because Kane always does well with tag teams, and he is totally opposite of Dean Ambrose, you know, something like that. But um, him getting the IC title, I I don't really too much care for Dean Ambrose to have an IC title. Like I said, I I I'd rather see him get a tag team championship because I and think. Then, and then uh, bad news, Barrett. It, that's kind of like shitting on the IC title because he. He really hasn't been doing anything with the IC title. I guess they're trying to preserve. I mean, that's, that's some wrestlers where they get injured to to them often. Bad news, very goddamn. Well, he, he, he is he injury prone or something, man? Cause he's injured again. No, no, no. He's think how many times he's got injured. Oh. How many times? Has, bad news, Bear has returned a lot of times. Like three, four times. Yeah. So my thing is, I I, I think that um. 
uh, maybe they're trying to preserve him or something. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to keep him, you know, off out of the ring. Uh, I, I I don't know. It's kind of a mixed review as far as his 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 buzz and his appeal to the audience, man. It's, it's kind of like they would him one minute, then they're like, I don't know if, we, if I want to cheer for bad news here, you know. But I don't know. I, I don't really keep too much care for both of them with the, with the title. I mean, I think it, it can be it can be utilized better because for one, I have a problem with with, Bat, with Barrett having the belt. Mm-hmm. I just don't. There's there's, there's no good storyline for him, you know with the belt. I mean, great wrestler, you know, but he looks good with the belt. But at the same time, no good storyline. You know, no good feud. D- Dean Ambrose is not gonna give Bray Wyatt. I mean, um. Bear no no damn that's that's not that's not giving that's not giving him no justice in my opinion. Like from what I'm reading right here, they're talking about turning Fondango into a baby face. Yeah, because the, the the dark the dark Fandango is I don't know who the fuck thought of that idea. <laughs> that was just stupid. I mean, having him being arrogant because if 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 this style is flamboyant. You know, so why would you make him dark and sinister like that? The only, only reason you should make him dark and sinister like if they was to turn him and uh, bring him to a part of a part in um, the, um, the Bray Wyatt faction or something like that, then turn him dark and sinister, like uh, more d- deeper, and then do it do that. But other than that, there's no reason why he should he should get watered down. He needs to be he needs to be more flam flamboyant. And be partners with Ambrose. Two totally different characters who don't care for each other. You know, go for the title. That's but uh, let, let's move on to to the Ascension versus Star and Goldust. Uh-oh, uh oh, Star and Goldust. Yeah, Gold Goldust had a really good showing here. I think he outshined everybody in this match, but it ended up with the Ascension hitting the Fall of Man and. I, I kind of like how they hit the fall of man here. It, it kind of shows that they don't have to go like a far ways out to hit it. They can just, if one of them is behind you, the other one, they'll just before, do it. But where are they, where are they going with, with, with this this descension of gold gold and stardust? I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't know. Maybe, I, I guess, like you want to say, before, maybe they're going to try to show some type of match between stardust yeah. and gold and go out there. I think I, I like I said before. I don't think they should go that way. I mean, it's it's been utilized too much, too many times before. I'm I'm looking at you know situation. If that's the case, fake an injury with gold dust and have Stardust defend his brother. You know, have have it's time to go ahead and and, and give give Stardust that breakaway character to where he becomes one. Well, like I said on the last show before, or or, or as I said on the, uh, the the behind the scenes uh, podcast, I I feel like it's time for Stardust to be more of a Sting like character. Have Stardust help help Sting or something like that. You know, give him that rub to work because his Stardust there's money in Stardust. People need a character of the of that magnitude to where they paint vigilante type character that, you know, is there the kids can actually identify with and they they're superhero like. But keep him and give him that, that Sting type type uh the Sting rub for um famous beach type of type of rub or whatever like that. Give him that that, that California boy rub that Sting once had before, and let him fight. You know, let him let him be that character, that solo character. If you're gonna be moving Gold Goldust out of the way, um, but having a feud between him and his brother, we've seen that before. I don't think we really care. I mean, we know the end result, and and seeing Stardust or Goldust, I mean Stardust or uh, or, or Cody Rhodes make a heel turn. Come on, that you guys. Get, they, they, I mean, I, I feel like they can make more money out of. You know, my brother is my brother got hurt. Now I'm, I'm fighting for my brother's honor type of situation. That that's more of, more of it. And if you're gonna be moving just out the way, fake an injury, and do it like that. But I, I'm seeing where they're going with this, and I'm hoping they're not going with it. This is not the situation. I mean, and, and as you see, that's the only way the center can win is is having Rose and Gold or the starters and Gold having some type of miscommunication. That's the only way because it, it it does kind of make no sense when you like, hold up, how is it that these two guys that know each other in and out are having fuck-ups? This doesn't make any sense. It's like the Hardy Boys 
having bad having bad direction of where they're going in the ring. Like hard boys know each other like back of that fucking hand. It, it's nothing to them. So I think they should have done it with somebody else as far as a, a team of you know defending and and just falling apart. Like not with the brothers. Do that shit with New Day or something shit. The show or something like people that don't really they're not that tight or do it. You know I'm, I I don't know. Do do with Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. Show them kind of having issues or whatever. They didn't get back on track because go to Stardust. No. But once again, man, the, the match was was decent. Um, you know my opinions on it. When I still talk about the tag team division. I just wish that the tag division was much more exciting because. A company like W are too big to have such a poor tag team division. Poor, it just I mean, it's it's a it company too. It's so big that they can have more exciting storylines, more exciting theatrics with tag teams. I mean, this this is this is it's, it's ridiculous that they're not that creative and they don't. You know, it, it's too much money. It's, it's, a company has too much money to be so damn bland with with the tag team division. It should it should, it should be one of the top. Um, things to watch on that show, but unfortunately, we have to turn to um, TNA, which with the few Texans they have, they still are in fucking entertainment and still throwing yeah. great matches. So that's my revolution. Opinion. The Wolves, even the bro, even the bromans are kind of entertaining. They, they play their part, you know. And yeah. I, I don't get it. Their teams are way more, they're more interesting, and, and, and I don't understand. You know, I'm like, wow, yeah, I, I like their teams better because, therefore, they give you character. They, they give you something to go off of. And everybody plays a part. So, <clears throat> once again, man, um, that's my opinion on this particular matchup and, and the, the stuff that lags behind it within the tag team division. But go ahead, America. All right. Well, before the next match, there was a little – I already talked to you about this. There was a little segment where they did a little vignette for – Daniel Bryan versus Seth Rollins, and JBL said, well, Seth Rollins takes on our resident farm animal. And he didn't say Daniel, but he just said, our resident farm animal. And I tweeted to him, and I said, you know, exactly what he said in the tweet that I said, would it kill you, JBL, to show, to treat Daniel Bryan like a man inventor? And I got blocked for that. Mm. You had to throw that one in there. I mean, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's not him. It's Vince in his ear telling him to say that, so he, he's protecting his job. No, no, he's been it, no. Now I'm on JBL side. JBL has been, been calling him a farm out. He's he's been called the goat face and all that type of shit. So that's really not. Nothing. I'm I'm against you on this one. I I don't think that there was nothing wrong with you know his comment because they've been calling him the goat face this and that, this and that, this and that, this and that all that shit. So. He's all he's, he's he's been called that shit from jump. He's been called the troll, all that shit. Way from the top. Even, even way back way back when he he's always been called that shit. And um you know, I don't I don't get I mean, cause, I mean, you think back when he was with Team Hell No. They were calling him goofy ass names and farm names, so he's not he he's been called that, you know, so JBL mentioned it all tonight. It wasn't a shock. I, I think that's why it went over people's heads because they're like, well, they always say that shit about him. Well, he could have said, like, our resident farm animal, Daniel Bryan. He just said, our resident farm animal. And that, and that, and he just cut off like that. Yeah, he's, 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 he's the goat. He's the goat face motherfucker. So, you know, it, it was just, it was really just a, 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 a natural rub of, of that phrase, we call them the goat face this and yeah, all that other type of shit they be calling us silly looking ass. I, I don't think he, I don't think he, it was a mean shot. It's just it was something that came off natural from what he's been already called. And, you know, he and he had a T-shirt called really a goat or something about the goat, some shit. You know, so if, if you have an issue with the farm situation, then you just take an issue with a lot of the shit that he, that he even gets behind and having a goat for his fucking T-shirt picture. That should have been some red flags, like I mean. So, you know, I, I don't think that there's really a, much of an issue with him calling him resident farm animal because goats are residential farm animals. Yeah. Still, but anyway, 
John Cena comes out with his dish rag. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, he says that. Let me see right here. He's hanging in there. He, he, he's hanging in there. Yeah, it, he says that Cena is going to face. Oh, no, no. A promo says that Cena is going to face Rusev for the United States title, which. Thank you, WWE. If you wouldn't have done this, it pretty much been like you are spitting on the U.S. States title, which, you know, for some reason, they're treating the U.S. title better than the IC title. And you would think it would be the other way around. Like the U.S. title is from WCW, and the IC title is their title. So, you know, how it is with when it's Sun and WCW, they always shit on the WCW stuff. But they're actually treating that one pretty good. But, um, uh, you know, if, if they would have just had this match where even if John Cena was going to lose or lose in a wacky way, not, Rusev not putting the title on the line would have made the match to me kind of pointless. So I'm glad they made this match a United States title match. So it makes the title look important that John Cena, the holy mecca of Dirty E, John Cena, is fighting for the United States championship. I'm looking, and I'm, I'm making an early prediction. Yeah, I'm predicting. I'm, I'm predicting, Rusev wins, mm. <clears throat> or cleanly or dirtily, or he either wins clean. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I wouldn't. I, well, no, I wouldn't say clean or dirty. I'll say he he win, Rusev wins. Rusev the Rusev way, but or it is 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 a disqualification situation mm. to where I, I think the WWE. I think they, they're gonna they're gonna milk this one. They're gonna try to go a situation where they're gonna make another part two or if it <clears throat> to where it's a disqualification. And Russo now is John Cena has to has to re fight for America. Yeah, I think they're gonna milk it because therefore, and if I was WWE, I would milk I, I, I would milk it real good because you want to pour everybody's emotion again to getting behind it because right now people don't really care. <laughs> It's, it's kind of hard to hear the USA chants, but then again, Cena sucks. It's kind of like, hmm. You know, it's, Cena sucks. It, 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 I was hearing it on on uh, when I think when he, when he was uh, when he was uh, kind of approaching. The, the, well, I think they had a run in with each other not too long ago. What I did, and it was kind of it was lopsided sided chants with this. So, um. I'm I'm going I'm I'm hoping this thing to lose it. Mm -hmm. So somebody else it, it, it be somebody else instead. But um it looks to me like they they're, they're gonna try to stretch this a little bit more and maybe have John Cena win at WrestleMania instead. <clears throat> to where it'd be it'd be a controversial loss or whatever or crazy controversial loss or a disqualification at Fast Lane to where John Cena to win the belt uh at WrestleMania and you know, present it on Raw. That's what I'm looking at. You know, but uh, I, I I I hate for it to, to the streak and everything like that. Well, not the streak, but the uh, winning streak. Well, yeah, winning streak. I hate for it. To, I would hate for it to, to, to end. Mm -hmm. You know, with John Cena being the one to do it, I would rather Randy Orton do it. You know, but one thing about it with Randy Orton though, I don't know. If, I don't know if it'd be a good matchup to have Randy Orton versus Bruce because Randy Orton. He's too he's fucking too late, goddamn skill. His his ring psychology is, is off the fucking meter. But I think I, I think it'll look more like Randy Orton is going to win. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I would I would rather see Randy Orton beat Rusev for uh you know for for the belt and whatnot. I would I rather see him defeat Rusev instead of Rusev uh with instead of John Cena beating Rusev. You know it just. The reason why I say that, people, because they're like, oh, maybe you hate no John Cena. I, the reason why I say this is because I don't want to see a fucking flop of USA getting behind somebody, but then again, these fans be like, boo, and, and, and they start cheering for Russo. You know, that fucks up everything. That's why, that's why I don't like the WWE doing this, because therefore, you can fuck it up. You know, it's like seeing the Iron Sheik being cheered over Hogan. Like, you don't want to see that shit like that. It's, no. So I'm, I'm hoping that yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. They're gonna they're gonna boo, or some people they're gonna start they're gonna start cheering for Rusev. 
Let's go, Rusev. Yeah. So it just be a poor, poor matchup for them to put up against. Let's go, Lana. Put them, put them, put them up against John Cena. I think that's stupid. You know, then they're gonna be chanting Michael Cole and we chanting J. B. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know that, how that shit go, but um. Lana's I, ass. Lana's ass. Yeah. I, I bag bag man. Go ahead and let, let's continue the review. All right. So John Cena talks about always overcoming. No matter what the authority throws in front of his way, he's always going to overcome. And uh, no matter if the people cheer or boo him, he's always going to fight for another day. And Rusev, he's going to overcome Rusev because Rusev thinks he's the past. But he's going to show him that he's not the past. And then he called brains back, Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, and Eric Rowan. Stephanie McMahon gets on the time trial, and her and uh, Dolph Ziggler to change some words or whatever. And she tells Dolph, Shouldn't you just like shut your mouth or whatever? And uh, aren't you tired of somebody else fighting your battles for you or whatever? But that's all going to change now because we're going to I'm going to put you in a match, and everybody else is going to be Ziggler versus Bray, Rowan versus Rusev, and Ryback versus Eric Ryback versus Luke Harper. Okay, my issue real quick. Mm -hmm. Ryback versus Rusev. What the fuck happened? Like that's who I. That's, I mean, I I know I threw out Randy Orton, but the only reason, the only reason why I X out Ryback is because it seems like WWE just kind of like trash when people want it. People wanted Ryback to go ahead and, and beat the son of a bitch, yep. but it's like they just gave Ryback some like oh you know what this storyline is too good, so uh, we'll give you John Cena instead. Like. What the fuck? I mean, I, I know John Cena needs this type of rub. He needs, they need to somehow try to trip people into cheering for John Cena. I get it. But try something else, man. I mean, you know, bring, in a, bring, in a, bring in a a Korean wrestler and have him be the new anti-American and let John Cena be him. But um, I think Ryback should have, should be one facing, well, he should have been faced him and Possibly, you know, beat him or something like that. I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I, um, let, let me let me shut up. Uh, this is gonna be right back at WrestleMania or something like that. I hope so, because I mean, I, I really don't. I, I really think they need to trash the thing, the uh, John Cena storyline with Rusev. I mean, trash that shit. <laughs> Have Rusev attack John Cena and injure him. Take him, take him away for fucking months or something like that. Then let Ryback step in. And be the one. That's my friend. That's my homeboy. He helped me when I was down. I'm gonna help him. Let let him step in, and now let Ryback be defending Johnson. That's you know what? You're a smart American. Let me hire this guy here to be a writer. Cause that's that's how they need to do it. Let let Johnson get attacked before the match, and he can't continue, and he's out for for a fucking couple of months, and then have him be replaced by Ryback, and Ryback does you know defends his friend because his friend defended him. Type of situation, because once you do that, that's gonna have a crowd going going nuts. They so, love it tonight, yeah. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's all he had to do. Once he started doing that, it was a wrap. They was man, that that was that was it. <laughs> Go ahead. But um, okay. Then you move into the next match: Harper versus Ryback. Pretty good match. I mean, Luke Harper, we don't really have to say anything about Luke Harper's in ring skills. Ryback improved, very improved skills. Uh, when you talk about some of the spots in here, Ryback tries to go for a meat hook clothesline. Luke Harper catches him with a super kick on the jaw. Just, you know, uh, Ryback kicks out of it. Ryback counters a headlock pull up into the shell shot. Uh, Harper counters that. For a big man, he, he does a sunset flip out of that into a pin. Wow. Uh, right back kicks out of that. Uh, and then he meat hook clotheslines Harper and then and then the uh, shell shot and gets the pinfall. One, two, three. Uh, good match. I don't like what they're doing with Luke Harper's character. He, he's too good and too big to be a job. Now, I would like to see him back for the Intercontinental Yeah. 
Yeah. My opinion on that one. But uh, <coughs> good match. I, I guess now, now we can we can run, have we run through the uh, the other matches as well. Cause we, we got a we got a long way to go. Then let me see next one. Jimmy Uso versus Cesaro, Naomi. Uh, wow. I, I thought you want to talk about that a little bit, Tishon. Oh no, I ain't gonna touch on. I ain't gonna touch on that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help you skip speed this just a little bit because I, I know. I, well, I get, I get this feel, and I'll be all day. Uh, so Cesaro controls most of the match. Cesaro, he goes to the top rope and tries to come off with. I think it's a double axe handle or whatever. Jimmy Uso hits him with a super kick. A lot of super kicks here. Um. And then Jimmy goes to the top rope to go for a splash. Kid distracts him, and as he's jumping off the top rope, Cesaro jumps up and hits him with an uppercut. One, two, three. You know, I, it's it's hard to tell which one the Uso is the better twin. I I, I kind of got to lean toward maybe Jimmy might be the more. The, oh, don't you dare! Don't you dare! Don't you think you think Jay? Well, I, can't, I can't really tell don't, don't try to do it with twins. Please, don't, don't try to do it with twins. It's like a, you, you, you look like a lost cause trying to decide who's the better twin. Shit. Fuck that shit. Just wait till one of them gets fat or out of shape or something. Then you say it. Or one of them yeah, shaves their head or whatever. Yeah, so. yeah try to make a difference then. But shit. You look at twins. Yeah. Identical twins at that. So. Fuck that shit. Yeah. That, well, <laughs> they also noticed say something about, I think SmackDown is going to be a Double date between Jimmy Uso, uh, Jay Uso, and his wife Naomi with Tyson Kidd and Natalia. So that's gonna be on SmackDown. The sports entertainment, though, that sports entertainment. Uh, I, I'm kind of like I'm wondering about the Cesaro Tyson Kidd tag team. Like Natalia, she's with the tag team, but she's not really with the tag team. I'm expecting like Cesaro, he's gonna show up as like a third or fourth, what is it be a fifth wheel on this date and it's gonna be it, it may be some kind of comedy or whatever. It, it depends. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I, what, what do you what do you think about this shit? Or what do you are you are you looking forward to that 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 little bit of sports entertainment or whatever? Nah, I, you know they they text envision to me is not exciting. So I don't really have any comments towards uh, this situation with, uh, with with Cesaro, Kid, and uh, the Usos, and uh, neither Nally or Naomi. I mean, I have no interest in this particular storyline. It's too much waste. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on to the Miz and Miz down back say seven. Bert. Gold. Yeah, like a guy comes up and says, "Well, I'm a big fan." Can I get an autograph? And Miz like no. And then he said, "Look, I, I want Miz Dial autograph. Miz Dial autographs it. Miz takes it, rips it up, and throws it in the guy's face. And he tells, he hits Sand Miz Dial with a lot of truth that me you had said like before. Miz took Sand Dial under his wing. Miz uh, Sand Dial was like pretty much stuck in limbo, a, a nobody doing stupid, ridiculous stuff." Without the Miz, you know, he would have still been doing stupid things right now. And he says, look, I'm, you're, I'm firing you as my stunt double, but I'm going to hire you as my personal assistant, so stop doing stunt my stunt double work for me or whatever. I, I like it, and I like how the Miz handled himself in this segment. He had a really good promo. And while I already said I called the people, what I'm ready to see now is a be my – Start double match. Miz versus versus, versus Miz now, or, or Damien Sandow. Damien Sandow beats Miz, and Miz has to become his start devil. I'm, I'm ready to see this. Make it happen, WWE. Make it happen. Right, let me see. Move on. Bray Wyatt versus Dolph Ziggler. I think this was match. This was match of the night. A lot of good stuff here. Start off kind of slow. I I like this one spot where. Ziggler, he tries to reach for Bray Wyatt on the outside. Bray knocks him through the ropes or whatever, and then suplexes him from the inside of the ring while Bray stands on the outside and suplexes him to the outside. That was, that was a good spot. Uh, there was a point in the match where Dolph Ziggler hit a – it looked like a running super kick to Bray Wyatt's knee. 
Uh, then the end of the match comes. Dawes tries to hit. He hits the Fame Master, but Bray Wyatt pops up. And while Ziggler is going back into the ropes, Bray Wyatt catches him and hits him with the Sister Abigail. Gets the pinfall. One, two, three. Excellent match. Yeah, it was, it was a great match. Um, it it gave the necessary, you know, uh, it gave you the necessary storyline and and or chemistry. I'm sorry, it gave you the necessary chemistry within this matchup. And uh, two, both are a great performance. So I didn't expect anything less. I was expecting to have a good matchup, you know. And they they, they got a little, a little little semi uh, high flyer stream, which is great. And got more bang for your buck in, the, in this matchup, man. It was, it, was, it was an excellent matchup. Um, I don't see very anything that needs to be critiqued, but I don't think it is. It's just, it's no storyline. It's just, you know, it, uh, there's nothing to go with it. No great storyline because a matchup like this, there should have been some some draw to it. But you know, but we, we but we got a, a nice matchup. But I, I feel like when you got two caliber of characters like this, there should have been some 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 build to this. Um, but I get it, you know. Oh, I'll, I'll, sw- I'll skip past one thing. Rowan and Cena backstage. Cena's got that look on his face. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really oh, sad right now. You, you mean you mean Roman and Daniel Bryan? No, it, it was it was well, no, it hadn't come up yet. It was Eric Rowan and Cena. You know, Roman. Oh, came I, 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 thought, I thought I said Roman. I was like, hold on, is it Roman? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you could, you would have bet I've been skipping that goddamn thing, but you know, um, nothing interesting about that segment, in my opinion. Just a bunch of ass kissing. And, <laughs> See, um, I, I like, I like that you helped me when when I was lost. People treat me like an outcast, and you stood up for me. You still Don't fucking see. lost. You got a mask on. Been there seven foot tall. Lost. Um. <laughs> I say I, I say trash that thing. I mean, I don't know about you. I say trash. Okay, we're gonna alley that one into the trash can. Uh, then you get Seth Rollins and Triple H. Seth Rollins talks about no Triple H. He's telling Stephanie that the the fans fell for it. Uh, we're gonna get what we want and everything like that because Seth Rollins he's gonna beat Daniel Bryan and he's gonna beat Seth Rollins. We knew that Daniel Bryan was gonna come out. Blah 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 blah. It's all working according to plan. Evil laugh. Ha 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 ha. And then Seth Rollins says, "I'm going to handle my side of the, side of the deal." And you guys aren't really expecting Daniel Bryan to win or whatever. And then he said, "Like it was, it was like he brought something about Randy Orton." He's like, "Thank God I'm not Randy Orton because I beat a Randy Orton." Yeah, truly, that says he he's not going to be like Randy Orton because he can see him as the face of the company or whatever. So I guess they're planting the seeds of Randy Orton coming back. I thought he was gonna make an appearance tonight, but he didn't. So, yeah. Hmm. You, yeah. You, you thought he was coming back? Yeah, I I, I was like, well, I, I, it, he should have came back. That was the perfect cue. I mean, they should. I, I want to see what they're gonna do when he comes back, because therefore, I, I don't see no reason why he shouldn't have been in that, that comeback there. That's all I have to say about that statement. Then you get uh, Paige versus uh, versus Alicia Fox uh, with the Bellas on commentary. Oh, forget that shit. Okay, we, we're just going to say this right here. I'll, I'll just sum it up real quick. Alicia Fox goes for the Tilt World Backbreaker on the page, goes for a pin. Paige reverses the pin, gets the one, two, three. Alicia Fox, who's now like bipolar face heel. Whatever attacks her and puts her up in like a surfboard type thing or whatever arm trap, and the Bella come in and spray spray tan over Paige because Paige is pale. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's spray tan? They spray spray tan with some black. Type of shit. Um, they wouldn't have. They sprayed it with some black shit. <laughs> no, that's how that's how spray tan is. Like it, you spray too much, you, you you spray too much spray tan is gonna make that black effect. So when you spray, I, I I've seen this shit like on you know whatever, but like you spray a little bit, and like it's supposed to be like light. So when you spray it like that, it's gonna make a dark 
film or whatever. Hmm. So, okay. Uh, yeah. I learned something new. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess that's, you know, never mind that Paige, she's getting a title shot out of nowhere that she kind of doesn't deserve. Now the whole storyline is built on we hate Paige because she's pale. That's, that's, what I tell, that's what I told you. I, I believe if the WWE, if they're playing this right, they're going to milk it all the way through Fastlane to WrestleMania to the point where Paige wins at WrestleMania or, or if she wins at Fastlane, she, she retains at WrestleMania and is approached by AJ Lee the following Monday Night Raw and challenge. I, 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 so the only, the only way I give this, this storyline a pass is if they're going that route. You can go, you can go, you can go ahead. Wrap this up. Miz versus Sin Cara. I think it, the match was decent, I guess, but it was more of him getting mad at Damian Mizdow for trying to be his stunt double. You saw more tension between the two and with Sin Cara. Getting a roll up victory, Sin Cara getting a lot of like random roll up victories in the past couple of months. Well, whatever. And uh, yeah, and then you get a Bray Wyatt, I'm in this promo. I don't fear anything, living or dead. They used to fear you, now they fear me. Blah blah blah, scary face. So, this is a setup for The Undertaker. Yep, yeah, I, like I said, like I said before. I, I don't like the way the crowd didn't, didn't really buy into it and pop like they should have for you know him calling out basically calling out Taker, but that's my comment on that one. Go for it. Right. And then you get Rusev he comes out, and then Eric Rowan comes out, and as Rowan's get, Rowan is getting inside the ring, he gets attacked by Rusev, and Rusev pretty much beats the dog crap out of him, and then puts him in the accolade. Rusev gets pretty much tossed in the bushes. Shout out to DJ Academics. Love that little saying, tossed in the bushes. Uh, and then uh, Lana says, we're going to show you a movie to all the men, especially John Cena, who would step up and oppose Rusev. They show all these people, and they're like, the America. Or, 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 or should we say, in the words of, of, of our guy, DJ Academics, John Cena Sandusky. <laughs> so fuckery. But uh little hashtag joke for y'all. Y'all probably know what we talking about. But uh go go check if you don't know go check out DJ Academic, man. It's a funny funny shit going on and uh also great uh stories he 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 has some great media stories he brings to the table. Uh yeah, he 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 does that and like during the segment, they say like America, home of the free, land of the weak. Rusev has beat all of your top American heroes, and I don't know if anybody knows this, but they showed Sheamus, aka Sheamus, and what's the other guy's name? Ah oh, shit! Oh shit! Justin Gabriel, a Irishman, and a South Africaner, not Americans. <laughs> I guess they adopted Murder. Right? I'm guessing. How can it, they made sure to show Seamus's face? Like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think you're supposed to make any sense out of it. You, you, your head's going to explode. You try to make any sense out of this shit. <laughs> All right, well, let, let's move on to the main event. Um, Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan. Pretty good match, you know? You got all the Danny Bryan spots in there. You got the JJ security. And the end of the match comes with the JJ security getting doing the interference and then Seth Rollins while he's in the yes lock or whatever. He gets his foot on the rope and he crawls out to talk to the big show who was out there on the ringside or whatever. He's like, okay, yeah, yeah, get get back in there, buddy. And then you see Roman Reigns or whatever coming down the ramp, and he just, like, levels the Big Show with a, a massive jumping spear. I, I can't lie. That spear he did on Big Show, that was, that was pretty cool. Like That, that, that spear hug, that's what it was. <laughs> you know, the way he, I, I think it, what it made it good, cool, or whatever, 
was the way was how far he jumped into the big show. Mm-hmm. Like he, he had jumped like a, I, well, I don't know, we can't really measure distance or whatever, but whatever. So I I, I, I see who was really going for the Seahawks because apparently like he, the way he tackled like he was mad. <laughs> big shows unconscious and then Seth Rollins he's like oh what well, what well, hold up hold up hold up he um gets it he he like backing up Je- one I forgot I think it was Joey Mercury he took another spit from Roman Reigns and in the background you have Jamie Noble. The Joey no Joey Jamie J- Jamie Mercury Jamie. Joey, whatever Mer- not Mercury but uh Noble Jamie Mercury yeah Jamie Noble and, and Joey Mercury. <laughs> Jay, Jay just security. Guy. I told you fucking head gonna explode you out of explain that shit. Yeah. He, he gets in the ring with Celeron's money in the bank briefcase and while the referee is distracted with trying to get J, uh Noble out of the ring, Rollins he gets Superman punched by Roman Reigns, and then Daniel Bryan turns around and kicks Noble out of the ring, and then he hits the running knee to Seth Rollins again, the pinfall. One, two, three, cut to Triple H. Triple H, uh, Ren- Renee Young, she's like, Triple H, how do you respond to Daniel Bryan winning? Uh, uh, you want to know how I feel? This is the podcast. Uh. And that's the end of the key, key note, Roman Reigns tells Daniel Bryan in their, their one-on-one interview, which we, oh, we, 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 which we, we didn't talk about that part. They're, they're, well, not interview, their one-on-one segment. He tells Daniel Bryan, you know, basically to hell out of, you know, tell him to get, to get the hell away, you know, and fuck off, basically, in, in that locker room. But he comes out and saves Daniel Bryan's ass. Uh uh, I, I, or, or or maybe maybe they, they did that because they don't want him to come off as a heel where he doesn't come out to help save the day. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying something was something was a little off that But um, other than that, what do you have to say about Raw? It's, it's, it's been better than previous Raws. We can say that for sure. <clears throat> yeah, in, in my opinion, they, they've been on 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 the. A steady okay roll. Uh, I, I I give them a couple of okays across the board, but tonight was, was in my opinion was good. It was a good show. Um, like I said, I I, I think it led up some. There's as much more. It's much more better they, that they could do. You know, there's a lot more better they can do. But hey, they, they gave us some 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 good good quality. I mean, well, they have great production, great production, good quality, and they're leading up to some some okay storylines. So I, I think tonight tonight was was a, was a pretty decent good show. You know, I have no problem with it. Well, I have problems. It, things that probably could have been better. But other than that, there's really no, no big complaint. You know, they, they're, they're doing what they can do. Um, but hopefully we get to uh, take, also check out the uh, Stone Cold Podcast. And I w- wonder if it's going to be worth anything to talk about. You know, it's going to be worth listening to. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, ladies and gentlemen. And also, was there anything else that you want to say, America? As far as... Well, I could, we could I could address that video I put up, and oh, how, oh. How it went over somebody's head. It went over the guy's I'm, I'm head. Gonna, I got I got to grill you about that one. So America, yeah, you did one of the most boldest things this past weekend. You addressed somebody. Well, uh, um, call him Daily Nick, Daily X Man. <laughs> the Lex Man. Oh, the the, the Man. You addressed Mr. The Lex Man. Um, and in a way, uh, he was correcting him on something that he may mainly stated. Now, I, I, I I'm, 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 I'm interested in to see how one would try to correct this, but you know, you called him a plain out hypocrite, you know, and uh, you know, and I identify with it because you backed it up in, in, in good video footage which shows saying one thing and. Completely and, dismissing that. Exactly, and the other one. So you say you want, which it goes back to, you know, it goes back to what I once said though uh, earlier in the show, just a couple of um, moments ago, that I was talking about these wishy-washy ass bipolar ass fans. Say you, you own one thing, but then again, you, you flip flop every goddamn where. 
the way you, you say you want, like I uh, said in the, uh, the previous podcast, you know, they say they want new talent, they, they want this, they want that, but when you start giving them what they want, they uh, switch up. Prime example, um, and when I'm talking about what American Icon has got on, go on, go on this channel right now, um, American Icon on YouTube, and watch the video footage where he addresses uh, Daily Mix, man, with that Daily Mix, man. Uh, that's a weird ass name, but big ups to the to the to the young fella. You know, uh, he 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 gives. You know, he 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 still states his own opinion. You know, and, and that's why I, I give him the respect to that. But some people have issues with a lot of shit that he does say because he he, he does it, and I, I can't call it how it is. He does give some bias ass shit, where it, it's not like he's nothing but a pure mark for WWE. But then again. He he he's like the average fan where he writes and complains about pretty much everything and you know just want want something but then when he gets it he still bitches about it so that's what I, I I get out of the majority of like I watched a couple of his videos and they are they are very contradictory you know like with the video that American Icon just pointed out that he, he is uh, presenting <clears throat> it shows footage of him saying one thing and then doing another in the, in the next video. I want good wrestling when it comes to Dawson and when Daniel Bryan, but when it comes to TNA, you got to give me more, even though they have good wrestling. Yeah. You can't, and like, you, you can't contradict yourself like that. It, and it, 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 it should be reversed to where WWE should be the ones giving you more because they have a higher production, in my opinion. That is my opinion on that one. Yeah. You know, so... so. But this guy's shift, what I'm getting from you, American, is this, this guy, is his... his, his his issue is that, you know, he goes into this talking that he, he wants more, he wants action, wrestling is, is what, what, what he needs, you know, on the TNA a aspect of it. But then again, when he gets to WWE, he's cool. He's just, cool. just wants good wrestling, nothing else. Nothing else matters yeah. besides good wrestling. But wrestling doesn't, it doesn't, stuff doesn't matter, but it does matter. Yeah. It's wishy washy. So for those who really want more in depth, on what uh what I'm talking about is talking with, with American about go on American American Icon's channel on YouTube and check out the video. It's it's uh it's titled what what again American Icon? Uh, it's your boy the last man the hypocrite. He and like you show he responded to the video. I don't know like you said he was trying to just sort of like sweep it on the rug because you know it's hypocrite. But he's saying like I you know. I love Roman Reigns. People love Roman. Trying to put me as a Roman Reigns fan or whatever. I don't know if the video went over his head or he's just trying to like subliminally do it or well, whatever. Well, I I I say this. And I'm stop you right there. I I think that he was see one thing that people do is that some of these people that feel like they're celebrities on YouTube, but they feel like they have a some kind some kind of a follower, they do things where they act like they don't want to acknowledge you. But apparently, you can tell that it, something bothers a person when people you know they're commenting and constantly they're like, going at this situation, call, especially calling him a hypocrite. You know, he addressed you, but he also threw your address in with him addressing other shit. You know, so people who love Roman Reigns to a certain extent who say yeah, he, 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 he he was addressing <clears throat> the issue of of of, uh, of tonight's previous previous show, but at the same time. Then throw yours in, or throw your this or whatever in there. So that way, it wouldn't really give you much a shine, and it'll be like, uh, like, oh yeah, I didn't really care about it. So I just mentioned it just real quick. And that's it. So what I feel like that as a man, you know, if you got it's just like how you do, you went straight at the source. Like, okay, well, cool. I gotta say this. I'm gonna say this. I'm I'm not gonna mix your my comment about you just in the show because we have talked about our issues with a lot of different video casts or, or podcasts presenters. You know, and we put it within the show, but you took you, you took the, the next level. You say, you know what, I'm gonna just I'm gonna dedicate this whole fucking video to the issue at hand, which I'm pointing out something that's crooked. You see something that's crooked, address it. So, you know, I, I commend you on that one. And it wasn't me like twisting words around, it's using your own words oh, against you. you. you that's, that's, that's the beautiful part. You you I don't you didn't even speak not one word. You know, all you played was audio of proof. Everything was proof. <clears throat> I like I like the the last ending touches that you put on there, you know other, other video clip, but it, it was it was all perfect. It was right to the point where you can't nobody say anything but the person because the person that you're talking about is the one saying everything and contradicting himself. 
So, um, for those who ain't check out the video, I want to get out there. You go to American Alucard on YouTube and check that video out. Check it out. Um, oh, shout out to um to my guy Andre Corbeil. You know, uh, I see he's getting well as well, and he's putting out more more, more videos. But he also um liked it and, and shared. It. I, I actually saw the video from Andre Corbeil. That's when it popped up on my feed. I was like, oh, what's this video? And come to find out, I said, hey, this this is my guy American. He he just posted the video because. You posted the video, didn't you? I, I didn't. I knew anything of it. I didn't know that you posted the video. So that was pretty cool. I found out through Andre Graville. But um, other than that, man, Russell Talk uh, Media is 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 really taking off and striving on this this WWE review tonight. And um, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I enjoyed uh, TNA WWE versus TNA. You know, it's very much live, and we'll be back again um, after. I, I say this Saturday. Uh, when we go into the, the Impact um, review mm -hmm. and uh, TNA versus WWE type of side of it, but uh, Russell Talk Media for those who are viewing, go on Facebook. Uh, anyway, we're adding to the group as well, the Russell Talk Media group. Um, I don't think yeah. you have anything else you, you want to say, Mark? Um, one of the comments: Nightmare Legend ninety ninety one. No Randy Orton tonight was stupid, in my opinion. Also, Dodie E turned the New Day heel. I completely agree with both of those points. Hold on. He, 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 he's saying he wants Dodie to turn the New Day heel? Yeah, he wants the New Day to turn heel. Oh, yeah. I, I, we, we stressed that in, in several podcasts, so I don't know if we, we, we shouldn't even have, really have to go in depth on that one, but uh, to that to that young and uh, to the person as well, yeah, we agree with you uh, wholeheartedly on that one. And yes, Randy Orton should he should have came out, but I I guess they want to preserve Randy Orton for a future uh, appearance somewhere else down the line. But maybe I mean, well, they didn't really need him. They, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it real. They didn't really need him, need him, you know. But it it would it would have gave the, the show way much more of an uplift. But um, I fall back for a second, you know. I I think that. Maybe that they're gonna give you know, they're gonna throw in the Randy Orton for another show because this one was, was that good. They didn't really need him to, to. They really didn't need him. They didn't, they didn't need him to come out at all. You think so, they're gonna save him for like Fast Lane? Because like if they, he comes back next week, that means they only have like a week of bill for Seth Rollins versus uh, Randy Orton. So they might wait until Fast Lane to have Randy Orton come out. That way they can have it Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. I disagree. You know, they already had a storyline between Raw Rollins and, and, and Randy Orton. So therefore, you know, they, they can they can they can they can pop up on that following the Raw going into uh Fast Lane because they already have a storyline. Because if they want to do a video package, they can do a video package. They, they have several you know run-ins and so they already have a storyline built up. So they don't really need to build a match between Seth Rollins and, and Randy Orton. But I would say uh, if they if they do do it. I would say do it next Monday because, um, you know, at least they, they can let everybody know that that's on the car. You know, for those who love Randy Orton, they can tune in as well. But uh, other than that, they're they're pretty much right on point uh, with the with, with the Red you know, or Randy or, or if they want to take Randy Orton against Seth Rollins or whatever like that. You know, they have plenty of time. They don't they don't need very much build to it because they already have build already. So that's my well, opinion on that one. Well, before we get out of here, this card just put out last week. Pulling out all the stops this Friday. Hashtag lockdown is free on Destination America for the first time ever. So hopefully the show lives up to expectations. I mean, she says she's pulling out all the stops. Hopefully, you know. Oh, yeah. We, this is, this is, one thing that you, so far we can say for TNA, TNA's been flying colors every fucking week. They, they've nailed it. I have nothing negative to say about TNA. Um, I, I critique them a little bit sometimes, but they're they're on point. Um, Destination, I mean, lock, lockdown or Destination America, oh, Destination America with TNA Impact or TNA uh, Lockdown presentation of their pay per view on 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 public view. Um, this is a win, and I'm expecting one hell of a show. One hell of a show. I, I, I from the, from all from all the feedback I'm getting so far from people that were there when it was filmed, <clears throat> it's just amazing. And so, um, 
I'm looking. For, I'm looking for. I'm pretty much. I, I think it's, it's going to kick uh, the Royal Rumble's ass. You know. But uh, other than that, that's all I have to say, man. Um, Russell Talk Media, WWE Raw Review, American Alucard, T. Sean the One. Oh yeah, T. Sean the One on Twitter. Um, American Alucard, what's your Twitter? Um, since we're console gaming, LOL, or American, I'll, I'll have links to all of it in the description. Uh, let me see what I don't. I just I, I think it's just console gaming, LOL. Cool. Yeah, hey, that's it, brother. Keep commenting, man. Keep commenting, y'all. Put some comments down there, whatever I said, and uh, I'll try to get back to them and, and comment as well as, as uh, a part of the American a la carte. But um, I also I also read the last comments as well. And, uh, the, the other guy was putting on there, but hopefully, you know, we we come back with another successful show again. And thank everybody for listening, viewing, and even taking the time to check it out. And uh. Also, for those that are viewing this on the American Out of Cars channel, this will be posted on uh, Good Nation Entertainment, you know, um, to add that into the mix as well. But other than that, man, that's all we have to say for tonight. And hope you guys have a great catch you, Friday. Catch you guys Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Catch you guys Saturday. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'll put it properly. On his channel, I'll probably put up some other videos, but they'll be like yeah, gaming related or news related. Those news stories. Anyway, I got, okay. I got, I gotta check them out. I gotta check them, them bad boys out. And for for people that's wondering, like, well, T-shirt, you got a new camera angle. Yeah, that's, I'm I'm trying something different. I want I want you know I want to bring something different to the dynamic. So catch yeah, people's eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I think I I rather really look up at you stupid some bitches sometimes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, I'm, I'm going to try to catch the uh, the Stone Cold, po well, Stone Cold Podcast with Triple H on it, and then y'all should too. So I'll holler at y'all. Right. Peace out, guys. <laughs>